Today I want to talk about antibiotic resistance. This is something I mention a fair amount in videos here and there, but today I want to do a deep dive on what exactly it is and why it's important not just for your skin health and treating different skin conditions, but for total body health and the implications it has for human health in general. So what exactly is antibiotic resistance? Well, antibiotics are medications used to treat bacterial infections, but the bacteria can become resistant to these medications, and that is not a good thing. There are a variety of different little critters, microbes, that can cause infections in many different organs, pretty much any organ system, brain, lungs, kidneys, bladder, skin, you name it. There's bacteria, but there's fungus, viruses, parasites, of all of these different critters, antibiotics are meant to treat bacteria. And like I said, bacteria, they can become resistant. They have all of these different strategies to get around the antibiotics that they can work on, develop, refine, and then boom, the next thing you know, there is a strain, a population of a given bacteria that says <laughs> that antibiotic that you thought was gonna work is not gonna work. Why is this relevant to the skin? Well, if you've ever been to a dermatologist and they ended up writing you a prescription for something, there is a pretty good chance it was an antibiotic. Not only do we use antibiotics to treat different skin infections, but we also use antibiotics in dermatology a lot to treat skin conditions for which there is no infection. How does that make sense, you might be wondering. Well, it turns out antibiotics, not only do they help to clear up the infection from the bacteria, but they also are profoundly anti-inflammatory. They help to lower levels of certain inflammatory problematic cytokines, and therefore they are super helpful for treating a variety of inflammatory conditions. So we use them a lot for things in which there is no infection. We also like to use antibiotics a lot because they work very quickly, whereas other medications that we use to treat skin conditions take time. You guys know this already in terms of topical retinoids, right? You don't just put a topical retinoid on and boom, it starts working right away. You have to use it consistently for several weeks at a time. Well, if you have really inflammatory acne and it, you know, you're breaking out, you have these cystic nodules, waiting for a retinoid to kick in, well, that acne that you have there that's so inflamed, it's going to go on to scar. So an antibiotic can lower that inflammation, clear up the acne, even though truthfully acne is not an infection. But if we're not careful in how we use antibiotics and what antibiotics we use and how long we use an antibiotic for for any given condition, well, we do create a scenario where you can get emergence of bacteria that are resistant to the treatments, whether that be bacteria that cause skin infections or the bacteria, cutie bacterium acnes that lives on everyone's skin and is playing a role in what drives acne. Bacteria that become resistant can lead to infections, not just of the skin, but they can cause urinary tract infections, meningitis. Uh, the bacteria that cause different sexually transmitted infections can also develop resistance. Also bacteria that cause uh, pneumonia. What are the consequences of antibiotic resistance? Well, in the case of skin, your skin condition doesn't clear up or respond appropriately. But in the case of antibiotic resistance in general, we also have to think about the fact that once this emerges and people are dealing with infections that um, are caused by resistant bacteria, that leads to a longer illness, more prolonged hospitalization. It requires additional medications that are maybe more powerful and oftentimes more expensive. It leads to just an overall more complicated picture of illness and it leads to more death from bacterial infections. This is especially relevant to older adults, people who have a weakened immune system or who have background health issues. They go on to develop a pneumonia, the bacteria is resistant, well, that can land them in the intensive care unit and unfortunately shorten their life. So it's a really, really serious issue. One of the ways in which we guard against emergence of bacterial resistance to the antibiotics that we use in dermatology is to make sure that we choose the right antibiotic for the right problem, that we make sure to use the appropriate dose for the given problem, and that we make sure to use it for 
a defined duration of time with a plan to offload, if you will, and transition to something else. Now, some skin conditions clear up with a course of antibiotics. They don't necessarily need to be bridged to a maintenance treatment, but that's not always the case. So the condition for which we write antibiotics probably the most, and it isn't even a true infection, even though there is a bacteria playing a role, is acne. The bacteria, cutie bacterium acnes, it naturally lives on our skin, so it's not a true infection, but it does play a role in acne in people who are predisposed to it. So the antibiotics that we use typically are going to be doxycycline or minocycline. And we also might use a topical antibiotic like clindamycin. Antibiotics are actually a first line treatment for acne, but we really try to limit their use to three to four months so as to limit pressures for emergence of resistance. But there are already resistant cutie bacterium acnes that are resistant to our medications. Um, so by limiting the duration of time and choosing the right antibiotic, the one that is less likely to be one in which C. acnes is already resistant, that definitely helps. The three to four months for which we try and limit use, it's not to say that after four months and one day, you now have resistant bacteria. I think people are under the impression that there is some magic window of time where you're safe and beyond that, you all of a sudden get antibacterial resistance. And that's not really true at all. It's just kind of a guide to make sure we're not relying solely on antibiotics to treat an individual's acne, that we are working to transition them to something that will be safer long-term, like a topical retinoid. There's actually a newer antibiotic called sericycline. This was FDA approved for acne in children as young as nine years of age, and of course older, so fine for adults, in uh, 2018. It has different features to it that make it much less likely for C. acnes, the like acne causing bacteria, to become resistant. And, and another advantage of it is that it seems to be a lot friendlier to the gut microbiome. If you've ever taken a course of antibiotics, it can cause you know diarrhea, upset stomach, because it does disrupt the bacteria, the good bacteria in your gut. Sericycline is less problematic for your gut microbiome. There's also topical minocycline. Seems to be less likely to cause emergence of resistance. Unfortunately, minocycline, it does pose a threat of disrupting an individual's skin microbiome too much. So it's not perfect, but that is another, another option. But one thing I often point out specifically for acne is that if you are on a oral or topical antibiotic, and you make sure to use benzoyl peroxide skincare, whether it be a leave-on product or a face wash, that can really help reduce the risk of emergence of resistance to the antibiotic that you are using. The bacteria on your skin, they do not become resistant to benzoyl peroxide. And so that is why it is often advised that you use it along, say, topical clindamycin or oral doxycycline or oral minocycline for acne. These are all antibiotics. Benzoyl peroxide is not an antibiotic but it is antimicrobial. Bacteria cannot become resistant to benzoyl peroxide. Bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. That is what we're trying to avoid. By pairing your antibiotics with benzoyl peroxide, it can cut down on the risk of this. But we don't just use antibiotics to treat acne. Also use them to treat rosacea. Rosacea is an inflammatory skin condition where you have a lot of different factors going on. Antibiotics are very helpful, like minocycline, doxycycline, because likely because of the anti-inflammatory aspect. Usually with rosacea, try and limit the use of oral antibiotics to four to eight weeks. Now again, this is not a magic number. It's not like eight weeks is up, you, you're kicked out. But it is like a goal window of time just to limit the risk overall. One of the other ways with rosacea in particular that we have 
reduce the risk of emergence of resistant bacteria is to use sub antimicrobial doses of uh, doxycycline, 40 milligrams. So not really much to, to bother the bacteria because again, rosacea is not a bacterial infection, but we're really leaning into the anti-inflammatory benefits of the drug without dosing it so, so that it you know skews to antibiotic resistance. Oral antibiotics for rosacea, their efficacy can be enhanced by pairing with a topical antibiotic, minocycline, that may help limit the duration of time needed to be on the antibiotic so that you also limit the risk of resistance. Now that serocycline, newer antibiotic that I mentioned, has been shown to be helpful for um, the red bumps, the pus bumps of rosacea for clearing them up. It's not FDA approved for rosacea, but it definitely can help. Benzoyl peroxide actually can be pretty helpful for rosacea, provided that you tolerate it. Given what we know about how it's beneficial in acne for reducing resistance, it's prudent to consider it. Um, and it definitely by itself can help rosacea. The problem is benzoyl peroxide can also aggravate rosacea because it's drying and can be irritating. However, advances in formulation have made it so that, you know, that's less the case now than it was, say, 20 years ago. And the other skin condition, which antibiotics are a first line treatment, not because it's an infection, it's not, but rather we're taking advantage of the anti-inflammatory properties, is hydroadenitis suppurativa, which I have videos all about. Um, you get these painful boils in the underarm area, under the breast, uh, you know, or in the buttock area. They form what's called a sinus tract. They come together and you have like a tract under the skin that drains. Um, it is really aggravated by smoking, inflammation, um, friction. It's, it's really a debilitating condition. Antibiotics definitely can help to clear it up. Uh, a combination of topical clindamycin and an oral tetracycline is, is actually first line. Now for hydradenitis, you know, it's a, it's a thicker, skin problem, right? Like the bumps are not little pimples, but little, you know, pimples or small cysts. They're pretty large boils. So a, per, a longer duration of time, 12 to 16 weeks. Also with hydradenitis sapura tiva, you can pair it with, you can pair these treatments with benzoyl peroxide, which definitely can help, or chlorhexidine, another antiseptic wash, that does not pose a threat of resistant microorganisms. For patients with hydradenitis suppurativa, there's a combined antibiotic regimen of oral clindamycin plus uh, a medication called rifampin, uh, an antibiotic. That pairing together seems to be effective um, and is usually given for 10 weeks. However, some patients need a longer course. Then there's the antibiotic ertapenem. That given daily is also effective. The problem though in hydradenitis suppurativa is you get what's called these biofilms that form on the skin lesions. There's definitely a higher prevalence of clindamycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus um, on the skin of patients who have hydradenitis suppurativa. So it's definitely something that not only can, you know, lead to problems, but, you know, makes it so that your skin is less responsive. So moving forward, what can you do to limit the emergence of antibiotic resistance? Well, there are several things you can do. First of all, don't be afraid of antibiotics. Don't, you know, think, oh, my doctor has told me to use an antibiotic, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to have a resistant bacteria. I would not advise you to go down that route of thinking. Antibiotics are very useful for treating a variety of skin conditions. We just have to be smart about our use of them. And being smart um, involves a few different things. So I already mentioned using your antibiotics alongside benzoyl peroxide for the treatment of different skin conditions can limit the emergence. But outside of skin problems, um, the other thing that is really important to always keep in mind when it comes to, say you get sick, you get run down, you feel like you're getting a cold or whatever, you go maybe to urgent care or you go to your doctor's office and you go there in your head, you're going there to get antibiotics. But they tell you, 
this doesn't need antibiotics, please listen to them because a lot of people develop a viral illness. Viruses cause colds and flus for the most part, not bacteria. If your doctor is you know, confident that what you have is not a bacterial infection, but rather a viral one, listen to them because antibiotics are not going to treat a viral infection. They might actually make you feel a little bit better because of the anti-inflammatory properties, but they don't actually treat the infection. They don't um, prevent you from spreading the infection to someone else. They come with side effects and also they put undue pressures on the bacteria that make up your body can lead to the emergence of bacterial resistance, not to mention mess up your gut microbiome. Um, so, you know, this includes those of you who are parents, you have school age, you know, it's back to school time. So that means, you know, the onslaught of colds and flus and things of that sort. Not all of those things should be treated with antibiotics. It's, it's just not good for your child. It's not good for you. It's, it's not good at all. Now, if you have been prescribed an antibiotic, whether it be a topical antibiotic, or an antibiotic that you take by mouth, make sure that you use it for the recommended duration of time and make sure you are using it as directed. So if you're supposed to take it once a day or you're supposed to take it with food or you're supposed to take it, um, you know, in the morning, make sure you follow the directions really carefully. Don't stop taking it as soon as you feel better. As tempting as it can be, because let's face it, taking pills is annoying. Just because you feel better and you, you know, you're ready to go back to work, don't stop taking the antibiotics. That's a reason to you know, lead to the emergence of that antibiotic resistance is not finishing your, your antibiotic course. The other thing is um, don't save unused antibiotics. Don't reuse it in the future. Don't use someone else's unused antibiotics because it really muddies the waters and creates an environment that's favorable for emergence of bacterial resistance. How do you know if what you have been prescribed is an antibiotic? Ask, ask, say, what kind of medication is this? Is this an antibiotic? That's, you know, one way to do it. I'll write down the names of some common ones down in the description box, but off the top of my head, what we prescribe the most in dermatology is gonna be doxycycline, minocycline, also topical clindamycin, topical minocycline. Cefadroxyl is another antibiotic that you may be prescribed. Very rarely we prescribe something called trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. That sounds like a mouthful. It goes by the name Bactrim often used as well to treat a urinary tract infection, a bacterial infection, which is not fun. Um, so those are some common names for antibiotics. I will list them down and below in the description box. I'll also link the benzoyl peroxide that I recommend. You know, you could go with a leave-on form if you tolerate it, but wash forms have been shown to be helpful for reducing the emergence of antibiotic resistance and they tend to be less drying and irritating. So that's also an effective option right there. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to say for today's video with regards to antibiotic resistance. It's really a, you know, a problem and it's something we need to be mindful of. Like I said at the beginning of the video, antibiotics, they treat bacteria. They don't treat the other types of critters that can cause problems. But speaking of resistance and other critters, you have fungal infections and they are treated with, well, antifungals, not antibiotics, with antifungals. Unfortunately, we have the emergence of a very resistant strain of a fungal skin infection, a ringworm. On the end slate, I'm going to link my video talking all about this. So you're gonna to wanna to watch that one next uh, because it's a hot button issue right now in medicine and in dermatology. So check that one out next if you missed it. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.